about dealing with large data sets from the Active Directory. I'm Eileen Bichatel, I work for Fishme, and you can find me almost anywhere online with the handle at mean codes, and that includes my blog at meancodes.com. You may have known me in the past as Eileen Carpenter, but I recently got married and changed my last name. I know it's hard to pronounce, so just think of it as you should tell, without the LD and should. I'm a senior developer at Fishme. We provide simple solutions that help ed our customers educate their workforce about phishing by sending stimulated spear phishing attacks. Everyone here should know what phishing is, but if you don't, shoot me an email, I'll send you some links to click on. <laughs> Over 17 million emails were sent with the phishing app since 2009. With that statistic, it's no surprise that Fishme has a lot of data. <laughs> I've built many applications in the past, but had never worked with data sets this large. Queries that ran fine with 100 records would blow up to 10,000. Active Record is the library and RAM that protects and insulates us from having to write raw SQL. It's like a magical unicorn full of wonder and happiness. But naively ignoring SQL output is not a great use this tool. Ignorance only leads us to blame the active record for our problems and not being accountable for the code that we write. There were quite a few times where I felt active record would be best, and I didn't write thoughtful queries. I wasn't paying enough attention to how my code and data were interacting with each other, and I was setting myself up for disappointment. And when my SQL crashed or my queries were slow, I felt betrayed. How could Active Record treat me this way? <laughs> I trusted I was writing good, clear code, and I would have no issues. But deep down, I knew this wasn't Active Record's fault. It was mine for assuming its magical properties extended to being omnipotent. We need to understand how Active Record will translate into MySQL so we can tell it how we want it to behave. We can all be friends with Active Record. After a ton of research, I figured out how to better write my active record queries to avoid my SQL timeouts, memory leaks, and slow queries. I'm here to tell you about my mistakes so you can avoid personal problems with active record. For each of the fundamental card functions, create, read, update, and delete, I'm going to demonstrate a problem I've encountered with active record and the solution I came up with. Card functions are relevant to any persistent data storage and can be found in many aspects of an application. Create can be represented by create and view in Rails or insert in MySQL. <coughs> Read can be demonstrated in Rails and find, find each pluck, where, and many others, as well as select in MySQL. Update is found in update attributes, update all in Rails, and of course update in MySQL. And lastly, delete, destroy, delete all, destroy all, rails, and delete in MySQL is where you'll find the delete function. Once understood, it's not difficult to find card functions in all aspects of our application, from database to user interface to HTTP request methods. My examples will represent card from the database and active record methods. For my examples, let's imagine we have an application as an address book. Using an address book is a model of associations are easy to understand and explain. Here's an ERD to show each of those models and their associations. And if we look at them as code, we can see each user has many contacts and has many categories. Contacts belong to a user and have many categories to categorizations. Categories belong to a user and have many contacts to categorizations. Contacts and categories are part of many to many associations. They are connected through a third model, categorizations. Categorizations belong to a contact and belong to a category for the joint table. Without categorizations, contacts do not know about categories and vice versa. Let's start with create. Imagine we have a CSV spreadsheet that we want to use to create our contacts. This spreadsheet has 10,000 rows. We could just run through each row of the CSV and create each individual contact the active record with. This will create the following SQL, constructing an insert statement for each individual contact that needs to be added to the database. This insert statement will be run 10,000 times, which will take quite a while. What if there was a way to insert more than one record at once? After a lot of research, I found the quickest way was to use MySQL's batch insert. 
This, this method will speed up our creation of 10,000 records quite a bit. Now don't be scared, but this means we're getting our hands dirty with raw SQL. It's not often this happens in Rails, but there, unfortunately, there's no comparable method in active records, so we have to abandon it for this example. Using the same spreadsheet of 10,000 contacts, we'll create our <laughs> records using MySQL batch insert. First, we'll read each row of the CSV and create an array of all the contacts that need to be introduced into the database. We then set a batch size. This is really important because MySQL can't handle all 10,000 records at once. We'll end up lowering our MySQL in the the size or max query size if we're not careful. After a lot of trial and error, I found 2000 was a reliable setting for my servers, but you'll have to experiment on your own. Until I've inserted all the contacts, the contact values array is shifted by batch size. Shift removes the specified number of contacts from the front of the array and returns them. It does this until the contact values array is empty. An SQL statement is then built with the attribute names and values to be inserted. We need to join the shifted contacts to complete the value list. Batch insert is made possible through the insert syntax by feeding in all the values for each record we want created. This can be quite tedious if you have a lot of columns though, because the column names for them and the values must line up perfectly. And finally, we connect to the database and execute the insert statement. I'd like to note that this example assumes we've sanitized the input against SQL injection. Batch insert creates the following MySQL query. It looks a lot similar to the other create statement, except it's chaining all the values for instead of making a new insert statement for each contact. Let's check out the speed on these two queries. When using the benchmark module in the Ruby standard library, the output represents user CPU time, system CPU time, the sum of user and system CPU time, and the elapsed real time. For my examples, we're going to focus on the total time of user plus system. For the example where we created each record individually, it took 45.9 seconds. That's a long time to wait for 10,000 records to be inserted into the database. My school batch insert took less than three seconds. <laughs> That's a huge difference. Benchmarking times may vary a little. Based on garbage collection, allocated memory, and the version of Ruby and Rails that you're using, but it doesn't change the fact that my school batch insert is drastically faster than save, creating and saving each individual record. But because we're not saving each record, no callbacks will be fired. We're completely skipping the model and going straight to the database. Now let's read some data. Let's say we wanted to output the first name of each contact. There are multiple ways to achieve the same result. We can run each on contacts and output the first name. But if we have a lot of records, each can be quite costly to our memory. A single SQL statement is run and all the records are collected at once. Find each is a great way to save both time and memory. Find each will collect our data in batches of thousands. Regardless of speed, we want to be sure we are always using our server resources effectively and efficiently. FindEach helps us do that by running limited select statements so we don't blow our memory. Lastly, since we are only outputting the first name, we can get news club to get just that attribute. This is going to be much faster because a method will create an array of strings instead of returning objects. We will only have the first name attribute though, and not the rest of the record. So which one of these queries is fastest? Each benchmark is a one second. Find each is not much faster, but again with collecting records, we're more concerned with memory than time. 10,000 records won't hurt our memory much, but 100,000 records will have much more of an impact. With Fluff, we can see a lot of time is saved. It's a lot faster than each or find each, since we only need the record's first name. Okay, so maybe you're not impressed with these metrics. <laughs> <laughs> but what would these benchmarks look like if we had 100,000 records? Here we can see when the data set increases from 10,000 to 100,000 records, the length of time queries takes increases quite a lot, and the savings are more obvious. On the y-axis, we have the number of seconds, and the x-axis represents the number of records. For 100,000 records, each in blue takes almost 11 seconds. Fine each in purple takes 9.3, and fluff in red is the fastest at 2.11 seconds. 
Another interesting method that Active Record provides is find by SQL. This method allows us to craft custom SQL queries. At times, when writing our queries, this way may be faster and more efficient because Active Record doesn't always know the best way to get the data we're looking for. We can compare dates or optimize our queries for performance with Find My SQL. Now let's look at update. Let's say we want to change all of our categorizations from the coworkers category to the network category. In this query, we are collecting all the records of updating the category of D attribute on each one using update attributes. We are instantiating and updating each individual record for all 10,000. The following SQL will be produced individually for all 10,000 records. Update categorization to set category ID to 1 where categorization ID is 1. And it will do this where categorization ID is 2 and 3 and 4 all the way to 10,000. A better way to update all the categories from the coworkers categories and networking category would be to use update all. This method creates a single SQL update state. Update categorizations that categorizations category each of not. <coughs> Records are not instantiated and are all updated at once without running to save on each object. Again, because we aren't saving individual objects, no callbacks will be fired. The first query, we update each individual record one at a time, takes 14 seconds. That's not too long, but we can do better. Update all. <laughs> Update all is so fast for 10,000 records that it barely registers as taking any time at all. That's incredible savings we're seeing here. Now for the This is my favorite of the four prep functions because of the interesting problems that I've run into. To talk about delete, we first need to discuss the differences between delete all, destroy all, and how sending a dependency on a has many association affect their outcome. In cases where you're deleting a model through destroy all, and the dependency is set to destroy all, delete all, or destroy, the contact with all associated categorizations will be removed. Destroy all and contact will remove contacts individually and fire callbacks when a dependency is specified. From the SQL, you can see the associated categorization is selected, removed, and the parent category of contact is then deleted. We will do this individually for all 10,000 contacts and all associated categorizations in the database. If we instead run delete all on contacts, only those contacts will be removed, regardless of the dependency is set to delete all or destroy. The following SQL statement will be produced. No categorizations will be removed when using a delete all on contacts. Delete all will not destroy individual contacts and will not fire callbacks when run on a parent model. All contacts are removed at once. If no dependency is set, destroy all and delete all both ignore related categorizations and only remove the contacts. The difference is how they remove those contacts. Delete all removes them all at once with the exact same SQL statement as demonstrated earlier. It ignores the categorizations as it did before. Destroy all without a dependency removes each contact individually, but not categorizations. This is because no dependency is specified. It's important to keep these details in mind when setting up how our models are associated. These dependencies can have some interesting side effects. We delete all or destroy all are run on associated records to a parent model. What if we wanted to run a query like category.contacts destroy all? Regardless of the dependency, this code has a problem. <laughs> This won't destroy the contacts that are related to the category because the category does not own contacts. The only way category knows about contacts is through categorizations. So this code is only going to delete those related categorizations, not the contacts. So let's change that to be more clear. We want to be sure we are always writing clear and concise code. No one has their model associations memorized, and a lot of developers will think the contacts will be deleted, not the categorizations. Instead, let's write category.categorization to destroy all. And unfortunately, that's going to be slow. We're not, we're not deleting categories, so we aren't going to gain anything from the destroy all callback in this case. I want to just delete the categorizations. So let's instead run category.categorization to all. <laughs> the relationship between category and categorization is called a collection proxy. The Rails docs describe a collection proxy as the middleman 
between the object that holds the association, in our case of category, and the associated object, the categorizations. Let's look at how let's look at how the dependency settings on a has many association affect the leading records through a collection proxy. If we run category categorizations to we all and have no dependency set, instead of removing the categorizations, the category deems those records will be set to null. This is because the default setting on a collection proxy is to nullify. The records will be left in the database instead of being removed. You can see an update statement is run, setting the categorization's category ID to null instead of removing the record. What if we set the dependency option to destroy instead? Well, in that case, each record be instantiated and deleted individually. If this is what we wanted, we would have just used destroy all. Generally, when using delete all, we're trying, we want the records to be deleted at once because we're trying to save time and memory. We won't want to wait for individual objects to be removed. It defeats the purpose of using delete all in the first place. Okay, so what if we set the dependency option to delete all? It should be fast and efficient, right? Let's run it. 130 seconds? <laughs> that wasn't fast at all. Something's not right. Let's take a look at what's going on underneath the surface. I expected the SQL statement to be, de be delete from categorizations where categorizations category ID is one. Instead, I got delete from delete from categorizations where categorizations category ID is one and categorizations ID in one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way to ten thousand. This is because when deleting a collection proxy, the delete all dependency needs to return an array of all the records that have been removed. Because it needs to collect all the objects and return them, this ends up making the query very slow. This is definitely not what I expected from the legal, and this isn't really fast. So how do we fix this problem? There's an easy and clear way to solve this. I find deleting records through associations to be risky and complicated. We already know what we want to remove, so we can collect the categorizations through the category ID and delete them directly instead of through an association. The code is clear and concise. Benchmarks at remarkable speed of 10,000 records. It also produces the super simple SQL statement we were expecting in the earlier query. Delete from categorizations for categorizations category is one. Now that's a delete all query I can get. So what have we learned from these examples? Active record is a great tool, but we shouldn't let its magical properties make us lazy. Our assumptions about active record can have major consequences if we aren't paying close attention to how our queries are being translated into SQL. This is especially true with large data sets. We can overcome most problems with our queries by changing what we're asking active record to do and being more aware of the consequences of our code. There are some really great tools out there to help you profile your queries and our usage. New Relic can help identify places where we might have slow SQL queries that are consuming our memory. Mini Profiler adds a badge to your application that records query times from the database. And the bullet jump identifies n plus one queries and notifies you when you should add new reloading. Thanks everyone. <laughs>